I'm going to explain how you can control motion using something called Bezier controls. I think the technical term would be Bezier curve handles, but we're going to simplify it and call them Bezier controls. Go to working files, projects, and scroll on down to 1302 Bezier controls. This is probably the simplest project we've encountered so far. It's one sequence with one graphic on it, this tennis ball. This is all transparent here. We're going to move the ball through the scene here. So let's make this clip active. Go to effect controls, open up motion. We want a keyframe position with the ball starting here at the beginning of the clip. So I'm in a keyframe position there. I'm going to turn on motion so I can see the bounding box. There you go. Now I'm going to drag this guy off stage here, right up there. We're going to try to have this tennis ball bounce a couple of times. Now I'm here to tell you it won't look that realistic, but we'll do our best. Let's move in maybe about a second or so right around there. And we'll bring the ball down to the floor. There you go. Now you can see this is a straight line, but if you look closely, you see little handles there, which help us make this a curve later. Go another second or so in. Let it bounce up now. Not quite as high as it started. Semi-realistic here, right? Go a little bit farther. Not quite three seconds, maybe. Bring it back down to the floor. Like so. You see the picture we're doing here? Follow the bouncing ball, folks. A little bit lower each time. Maybe not quite so far to the right. And we'll go a little farther, bring it down to the floor again. And we'll go a little bit farther. One more bounce, I think. How about that? A little bounce here. I'm taking this vertex. It's probably over too far, so I'll drag it over like that. Make it a little more even looking. Maybe you're too far, too. There you go. A little bit farther. Down to the floor. And now we're going to let it just kind of roll off the stage here. Although it won't look like it's rolling now. It looks like it's going to be scraping along the ground here. We'll have it roll off now right to the end there. There we go, I'm off the end. So how does that look? How is that going to play? Let's go back to the beginning, and we'll just play this guy and see how that looks. Kind of comes down, kind of scrapes there. Erp, scrape. Okay, it goes too slowly now. And then, you off we go. Well, let's see if we can make it sort of semi-realistic. If this were After Effects, we could probably make it much more realistic, but this is Premiere Pro. It's not really intended to create effects that are like super refined. We're just going to kind of roughly make this guy look like it's a bouncing ball. When we put something in motion in Premiere Pro, we create what are called Bezier curves. These are these curves here with the vertices and the handles, named after a French automobile engineer named Pierre Bezier, who popularized them. He didn't invent them, but he used them to help design automobiles at Renault, and then they became popular because of his use of them. And they helped describe curves in terms of these vertices and these handles. Each of these vertices defines what's called an auto bezier curve, not because it's an automobile, but because it's automatic. And you can tell they're auto bezier because these handles are equidistant from the vertex, and they define a straight line going through the vertex. The reason auto bezier is the default bezier curve for a vertex is because it's smooth. It automatically smooths out each curve here, which is what you want to have, generally speaking. It's more realistic to have smooth curves. So let's watch that again, see how it looks. Just kind of smoothly goes through each curve. And the speed that it goes through and other things is defined by the steepness of the curve, what have you. But in general, it's a smooth change. If you take one of the handles and move it, you'll see that the shape of the curve changes on that side of the handle. See how it straightens out there and then suddenly goes to the right? Let's just watch how that change looks when we play it back. It goes straight down and then swoops over like that. When you change the shape of the curve like that by dragging a handle, notice how the other handle acts in concert in the other direction to keep it a smooth curve. This is called a continuous bezier when you move a handle like that. If you right-click on this vertex, which is the second vertex right there, right-click on it, and look at spatial interpolation. We're interpolating movement through space now as opposed to time, so spatial interpolation shows that we are now a continuous Bezier. We didn't change it to continuous by clicking this button here, clicking this word. We, in fact, just changed it by changing the length of one of the handles. you notice there's also linear and Bezier here. We want to have a Bezier curve. A Bezier curve tends to make bouncing balls look more realistic. So I want this vertex to be a Bezier curve, not a continuous Bezier or auto Bezier. So I'm going to go back to that second vertex again, right click on it, and say, let's change this one to Bezier. Now watch what happens. Nothing. Looks like nothing's happened. But what's happened really is that we've broken the handles. If I take this handle now and move it, the other one won't move in concert with it. They're independent now. So you can shape the curve the way you want on each side of the vertex. So to make it look more realistic, we pull it like this. This is how a ball really would behave. It would kind of come down and then drop straight down. 
We can add to that realism by taking this handle on top, which will work with the one on the bottom now. It looks more realistic, I think. The longer the handle is, the more it kind of stretches out the curve a little bit like that. You know, it gives a little bit of an arc there. So you can adjust that. And typically when you've got a bouncing ball, the handle on the right's not quite as stretched out. There you go. So let's see how that works now. It'll probably look at least a little bit more realistic. Here we go. Doing. It looks like a bouncing ball there, right? Pretty cool. So what about the top there? We might want to see how the top stretches out a bit more, because right now it seems to be that the top is kind of swooping too quickly. So I'm going to stretch out the top just a little bit like so. And then we can add regular beziers down here in the bottom. Let's just see how this one on the top works now. Bounce in a little bit there. Kind of still swoops a little bit, but that's just because of the height of the curve and the distance from here to there. There's not that much we can do about that. Now notice how close together the little dots are here and how far apart they are there. The farther apart they are, that's the faster the ball is moving. The closer they are, and it's going slower. You can adjust that by changing the space between these keyframes here. The closer they are together, the faster it's going to go over the same distance. The farther apart they are, the slower it's going to go over the same distance. So this is first, second, third vertex. Between the third and the fourth, one, two, three. Between this one and that one, if we make them closer together, they'll go a little bit faster. Let's just see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that so we can really pull them closer together. You notice how these dots now spread out because it's going to go faster there. Let's just take a look at how that looks. One more time. Wing, and then down to the floor fast like that. So you can adjust the speed, the velocity, by how far apart these keyframes are to try to fine tune how this works in terms of a falling ball versus a rising ball, things like that. Now I want to put a linear vertex down here. So that's the one, two, three, fourth vertex. Now if I right click on that vertex here, you'd think I might be able to work on it, but there's no option here to work on it. So I'm going to click away, put this thing back on. So I want to work on this vertex. So how do I figure out which vertex it is up here? Well, currently the current time indicator is there, which means it's on that vertex. So I need to work on this vertex here. And right click on that one, go spatial and change it to linear. Now it will look different. It'll just basically take on the shape of the preceding and succeeding vertices. So now it's pointing straight up like that, pointing down like that. I can change the shape here at this point by controlling it with these handles here. That'll change how that guy behaves down there. But otherwise it's just going to be a sharp, hard angle. Notice how close together these dots are here. That's because these two keyframes are very far apart. So it'll be very slow going up there. Let's watch that now for a second. Down it goes, down it goes, and now it's very slow. And then on we go like that. So I hope you get a sense of how these vertices work, how these Bezier handles or Bezier controls work. I want to go one step further, just a little step further here, and put some rotation on the ball because it's kind of fun to do that. Let's say the ball doesn't rotate till it hits the ground right there. So it starts rotating there. So on a keyframe rotation at that point, and the next point, the two vertices over, that far over, we'll have it rotate once, let's say. So I just go one X over here, one X, and click Tab. Now when we get to the next vertex, if I type in one X thinking it's one more rotation, it's not going to work that way. I need to tell it, go one more by making it two X now, two X, like that, Tab past that one. But I'm thinking, you know, maybe 2x won't be quite enough. If we got 1x there, maybe we should have it rotate twice when it gets down to this vertex here, instead of just once. So I'm going to change this to 3x, because 2 plus 1 is 3, right? 3x. That'll rotate two more times. Rotate once here, twice here, and the next one, let's have it rotate three times. What the heck? Next vertex, which is a couple vertexes over, vertices over. However you say vertex or vertices, let's go boom, boom there navigating to the vertices by using this little navigation button here. So I'm going to change this to 6x, so it'll rotate a lot. So it's going to rotate once, twice, three times, meaning one time here, two more times, three more times there. Now we want to rotate it off the page here. So we go to the next keyframe, the last keyframe at the end there. Have it rotate maybe just one more time or two more times. Make it 8x now, 8x. So that's how you set rotation. It's not like 1x and then another 1x and another 1x. You've got to keep on adding it up yourself to keep on going forward. So let's watch this now. Here we go. Starts rotating once. Now it's going to rotate twice from there to there. Rotate three times from there to there. And now it's going to rotate twice as it rolls off the screen. So that, folks, is how you use Bezier Curve handles, Bezier controls, to control motion here in Premiere Pro.